just have I was having problems dialing in, Rona. All good. We are we are on record. Great. All right, Steve, do you want to give a good overview? You want to start? Amy, uh, is there any certain section or area you'd like to start first? Um, well, I guess you just, as, as I look at this, um, you know, what I, I would like to know, and I think the boards would like to know kind of what the rec department did last year, how many people they, you know, how many people use their facilities, you know, how they change year over year, how, you know, COVID, you know, let change it last year, how may change it uh, next year and kind of, you know, what you're looking at going forward, you know, you know, we see your budget requests. Um, so, you know, for, you know, the request for, uh, administration is up 2.5% and Waveney itself is down a little bit rec Waveney and paddle tennis. And I think it's just important with this that, um, like you guys live it all the time, so you know what uh, rec does. But I think it's good to like put it in context for everybody. That this yeah. is what we do. This is, and then, and then this is our budget relating to it. I, you know, I don't know if anybody else wants to weigh in on that, but like as a starting point. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I would just say, Steve, I completely echo that. I, to be perfectly honest, I think the board is very responsive to learning about the levels of participation, how many people use paddle tennis, how many kids were running through youth soccer, all those sorts of things. It really gives us, you know, it's sort of our one opportunity to learn, you know, I mean, look, it's a dollars and cents process. I get it and we're all trying to get that done, but it's probably the one time where we get a sense of how much the town actually engages with parks and recs, what the use is, where we're putting our money and can help us understand in this COVID era about where perhaps participation rates fell, where they might have actually increased so that we are perhaps use this information and experience to be somewhat better prepared if possible uh, next time there's another lockdown. Okay. Well, yeah, we, we could start on that. You know, our, our, when we start a recreation program, you could see we're up, we're asking for $29,166 more, up 2.54%. Most of that's salaries. COVID did have a big effect on programming. Um, as you know, that last year, that last April, the governor closed the thing down until the middle of March, the middle of May. And so uh, we didn't get our tennis courts at Bee Park up until early June because the the, the uh, contractor, he laid his guys off and he, when he went to bring it back on there, they, he had a hard time getting guys to get back to work because they were making more money on unemployment than working for him. So, <laughs> so we didn't get the Bee Park courts up until uh, first week, of, almost the out second week in June, but we, we did reopen the, the high school tennis courts. That's one of the increases in our budget. Um, previously, the high school courts were open, first come, first serve, play, whoever's there, and you, you can wait for an hour to get a court, and we had a lot of people out of town coming to play because they were nice courts. We had people who were teachers bringing students and teaching, taking courts up and, and playing more than an hour. <clears throat> so when we opened in May, we took our tennis court at Tennis Meat Park and we used our sign up uh, program, which is tennis, te our tennis source sign up program, tennis bookings uh, sign up program. And we allowed any, any resident who came to go in and, and put their name as a household. And you can go in now, and you can make a reservation to play at the high school. And we had the attendant on duty and from uh, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. And the attendant monitored the courts and made sure people uh, were, showed up at their courts. and. And it, it really brought the courts uh, back into a, that's me part, right? <laughs> okay. Right, that, that's, that's me part. But okay. I'll, I'll go back to that. But, but the, the, the nice thing about the high school was that um, we have roughly had like 70 court hours available per day. And, and on weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, I think we were averaging about 70 to 70 to 88% usage on the courts, which was great. Weekdays, we found that you know, during during the daytime, the morning hours and, and then the uh, the late afternoon hours, we were we were we were doing really well with the bookings as well. We were probably at seventy to eighty percent in those times for the court. So people people liked it because they knew they showed up at, at four o'clock and they had a reservation. They had their court. They went on. They played. They got their hour in. Um, I, I know in early April before they the governor closed me down, I would go over there to monitor the courts and there'd be people on there that were on there for two three hours at a clip. You know, and they didn't want to get off. So this worked out really well. And I think. 
people appreciate the fact that they could play at the courts and enjoy them. Um, my so, wife so did you not, did, did, was this the monitor who was supposed to be at the Mead courts came over? Did you have another person? I think that, yeah, that I, I, went, I, brought, I brought the attendant over Mead Park and put him on duty at the high, at the high school. So Mead did, wasn't attended. Because we didn't have the courts open to Mead till, we didn't get open at Mead Park till the second week of June because the, the, they, they couldn't get the courts ready. <clears throat> um, but and then, I, when, I they were, when they were both open, did you have two attendants or what'd you do? We had, we, I, I kept an attendant, I kept an attendant on duty at the high school and I and also had an attendant duty at Mead Park. Great. And tennis, tennis was very popular. We had a very strong showing. A lot of people played, uh, people enjoyed it. So what I was proposing to do is to, to keep the sanity on the, on the high school courts. Cause I know if we open them back up, it'll be a free for all. We'll have a lot of people out of town coming in to with the courts and our residents can't play. So I was proposing that we put in uh, 50, Fifteen thousand dollars. My budget. We have an attendant on duty on weekends in April and May because the high school teams play till six o'clock at night. So it doesn't make sense bringing an attendant on duty for an hour, from six to seven. So I would would do is bring the attendant on duty uh, uh, during the day from uh, I mean weekend on weekends only in April and May, and then starting in June I have the attendant come on duty weekdays from nine to twelve, and then from because uh, the high school team doesn't get done until the fifteenth of June. So up to the fifteenth of June I would have. And attended from nine to nine to one on the courts, and then after one, the high school teams are on. So um, we would that be weekdays and weekends. In June we'd have a ten on duty from eight a, eight a.m. to uh, eight p.m. and have the courts covered. And then July and August we'd, we'd cover them on a regular shift, the regular shift. And um, I think it would be good for the residents. Now, you know, the increase there is, is about sixty fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars. I can't remember the top of my head, but uh, um, <clears throat> we I was talking to the commission in our meeting back in. Um, January about the possibility that we could charge a nominal fee. Right now we charge hundred dollars for an adult community to be park. But we could charge a fee like twenty-five or thirty dollars just for the resident to play at the, at the high school, and it would help offset part of the cost of the, of, of the expense of hiring an attendant. And uh, or if we, the boards decide, hey, let's 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 just offer to our to our residents as a, as a, as a perk, and um, uh, you know they could they could sign up in tennis bookings and. Not have to pay a fee as a, for a permit, and they can still use it. Have, we'll have an attendant on duty, and this way we can monitor the courts and how they're being used. So uh, that's what we can discuss and take on. But uh, that was one of the one of the thing, one of the things in our budget for COVID. Um, I know our our tennis clinics uh, that we have at Mead Park. Um, we started them at the high school and we moved over to Mead Park. Uh, our attendance went through the roof this year. We had we had an amazing amount of people show uh, sign up for courts, kids, adults. Uh, all our classes took off, and, and uh, we bought in about $125,000 of revenue just from tennis clinics uh, last summer, uh, and summer in the fall. Um, and we had a very strong showing again for tennis in the fall. Um, <clears throat> so that, that was one of the programs that COVID uh, was a plus for COVID. On the other hand, the state uh, uh, office, OEC, office of OEC has set up regulation for day camps. And as you remember, there was some talk that the Y took, took Kiwanis Park over the summer because they limited the size of your camps and how many children you could have. The Y applied and received a, 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 a waiver so they could have up to 90 kids. However, our camp, Waveney, which we normally bring 90 kids, and we were limited to 30 kids last summer. So we bought in, we broke into three groups of 10, and we ran our camp from nine to one because we could take our kids to Kiwanis in the afternoon. Um, so that seemed to go very well. And we ran, we also ran a, uh, our, our, our uh, Kidsville camp, which is for children, uh, Five, five and six, and uh, we held that over the Latin Center, and we had ten children in a, in a session. So that's all we could get into one room there. But uh, we had to use the social distancing and everything else. <clears throat> so that did affect our, our revenue some this summer. We normally didn't, we didn't get our normal numbers. Normally we have ninety children per session for waving camp, and we get another sixty children per session in the uh, Kidsville camp. But we had Kidsville got reduced to ten children and waving me down to thirty. So that hurt our, our revenues last year. Hey, Steve, you know what would be super helpful for all of us is if you could, um, you know, for each of your programs, you know, the tennis at me, right. tennis at high school, the camps, if you could, you know, just list what you had expected, what you realized, yeah, you know, so that. That, we, that we can see, you know, so because in this information you sent us, we don't have that. But I mean, I think that'd be very yeah. helpful to show, you know, the pool, et cetera, kind of what you actually, you know, 
what what you and then we'll see you can talk about the pluses and minus and I, my bet is paddles way up and stuff like that but that would be really helpful because then people can say yeah we're spending all this money but we're getting x y and z for this good okay i can i can i can put this there i i do have a chart that shows the revenue committed and you could i have it goes back for i can break it chart down for three years and show the last three years and you can see what the effect COVID had on our program for instance like our men's softball league we couldn't start playing softball till the first week of June because of, because of the restrictions. So that affected the number of teams. Some guys didn't want to play because they were concerned. And so we had normally had 10 teams. We had seven teams last summer because of the, it, it affected all different programs. We didn't run our, 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 our we have some programs like, like was a hit pitch and swim where the kids would come before four, four o'clock to six o'clock. They, they play baseball or softball with the kids and they go swimming for the, the other rest of the other hour. And uh, we did a tennis, a tennis and swim, but, or a, uh, a field hockey and swimming. We, we didn't run those this summer because we, we just didn't have the opportunity. Um, but yeah, we, yeah we, I'll, we, but I know our, I know for this coming year, we've already started our registration for our, our spring uh, our spring tennis and it, it's, book, it's book solid, it's amazing. We, in fact, the instructors are asking if we can open up some more classes. I just don't have the funding to do that. Um, we're limited well, by but, our budget. But, but if people pay for it, why yes, do you need do. funding? I mean, if you get enough people, it'll I offset it. What? I can't spend revenue. I, I, I have to have a line account. I have to have a line item account to spend to pay the salaries of the instructors. The revenue goes into a revenue account. I can't spend that. But uh, what I might did, do is did, look did at. We, I have some money we, uh, up uh, Yeah. I thought a couple of budgets ago there there was we we gave you kind of a miscellaneous item for exactly this circumstance where your sign up would be well in excess of what you anticipated, but you wouldn't have the budgetary restriction of then not being able to spend because of the um, failure to be able to. What they did was that they, 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 they broke my programs out to a different, to a different line item, but um, Kevin reduced that line item to $35,000 last year. So where I know we had $245,000, $250,000 of budget, he, he, he reduced it to 210 or 215,000. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but, but this is this is revenue neutral. That doesn't matter. I mean, if you, I, if, I could come back a little bit and ask for ask for trans, like like for instance, we we, we have our, our before and after school program, which is a big program. We run in the fall winter is a big time before after school, and we have part time salaries for that. So like I know this year we're not been able to run the before after school programs that we normally run. So I'll have some money left my part time salary. So I would go back to Lunda and say, hey, can we transfer X to my my program account so I could run some additional tennis courts? So we can do that. So yeah, why can't you run after school programs? We don't access some schools after school because of the COVID. Okay. They've, they've restricted outside outside activities in the school buildings because of cleaning and everything else. So. Can you run them over at Waveney somewhere? Do you, can you, can I'm, you I am running, I'm running some limited classes at Waveney right now. I'm running a, a, a mad science class with the, I, but you have to social distance all the kids. So I can have, um, I can have 10 kids in that class. I have a pottery class. Hands-on pottery, kids are painting pottery. I got ten kids in that class. I have a, uh, I have guitar lessons going on, and we can have eight children, eight eight, eight mm -hmm. students in each. We have two classes, one for four to five, one for five to six. We have eight students in each class there, but we have to keep really social distance, and whatever. So mm -hmm. we're limited the number of kids we can have. But we're running those programs, uh, which which is good. So we got something going on for the kids. Yeah. Um, and we also have a karate class going on at the karate studio in town. And um, what else do we have? You know, hands on pottery, uh, and science. And, and so those are no, those I, are I would just make, make the point, I would might make the point for you, Stephen, for Rana, I just, you know, with that flexibility that we tried to build in for exactly the circumstance where right. your increase was unanticipated and those expenditures, as Amy points out, would be revenue neutral, right? Because I think we specifically- Sure. Said you could only ever access this for programs that I, actually I that were self supporting Right. But to get rid of this wrinkle. So the other side of that coin is, of course, by cutting it, you're not saving anything because it only could ever right. be you. Right. So so if, if somebody got the bright idea of, oh, I here's a big number I'm cutting, you should call Michael or Amy or me and we'll be able to make sure that yeah. that survives. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, have a, I, have a, I have a whole chart here. I'll, I'll send it to you guys. Okay. Yeah. yeah. For example, like Steve, for paddle tennis, right? I know a lot of people playing paddle tennis this year because it's the only outdoor sport. <laughs> the question is, is, is the revenue 
been significantly higher for your licenses and also the guest fees, right? Went from $5 to $10. Paddle, How do you paddle is going paddle crazy. What's that? Um, yeah, well, like my paddle budget, it's up 2000 The reason that's up is because of the minimum wage law. It goes up a dollar an hour for everybody next year. So that, that affects my camp counselors, and my tennis court attendance and things. So that's yeah. one of the things that increases our, 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 our that 29,000 increase. But, but Mike's talking about paddle tennis. We had an outstanding year so far in paddle tennis. It's, uh, it, it, it's, it, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit. But the, our revenues are way up in paddle. And people are playing. And it's, 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 in a COVID year, it's amazing how many people say glad to be outside. So, so what I'm saying, to, to Tom and Amy's point, right? If you show the yep. revenues increase year over year for paddle, it's way up that a 5.8% growth in your expense for paddle should be more than justified by, let's say, a 30% growth in the revenue, right? So I think that would be right helpful. Year, year to date, year to date paddle. We, what have I got? Year to date, I got to hear Year to date paddle tennis. Um, we're up to we're up to seventy thousand dollars of revenue, um, and we were we had we had we had we had budgeted um, we had budgeted uh, we're up to seventy thousand dollars. We had, we had budgeted. Um, uh, I think we budgeted. 46 or 47,000. Right. So, so Steve, again, I think what we really need and everybody needs to see this, we need to see program by program, All right. how many people came, sure. versus, you know, how it changed. And then I think uh, program by program would be great to know how revenues came in versus what you expected. And it'd be great to do revenue expenses for each program. Not, not that we're looking for our parks to necessarily make money, but certainly some of the no, stuff- The is a perfect example, Amy. The budget was 46,000 for revenue, right? And the mm -hmm. expense was 36,000. They're asking for 38,000 next year, which is 6% increase, but their revenue is up to 70,000. Like it's a no brainer, give them the 6% increase in expenses. Absolutely. Their revenue is up 80%. I wouldn't even question that 6% growth in paddle costs, right? No, not, not at all. And it, you, you could make the argument that we should be providing a level of service that might require something more than 6% of an increase, right? right? Again, because it's not a profit-making institution, although, you know, look, we'll take the revenue where we can find it. But I mean, I, well, for I something like this. It's incredible. Yeah. 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 That, that, it doesn't come out in what you said to Steve. So if you yeah. do what Amy said, that will come out loud and clear. Paddle tennis, right. you have asking for six percent increase, but the revenues double the expense, and it's it exploded this year. So we should have more tennis. Uh, I, can, I can show you, like in fiscal year nineteen, we bought in forty six thousand two hundred ten dollars. In fiscal year twenty, we bought in fifty five thousand eight hundred thirty one dollars. In fiscal year twenty one, to date, we're at seventy thousand eight hundred thirty six dollars. Wow, great. <laughs> but so let's do that, Steve. When you come to everybody. On Thursday, it can't be just like, oh, this was this, this was this. We need the numbers. We need the number of people. We so that we can understand. And I think it's a great opportunity for you to profile what the rec department does and how it provided services, and then also areas where it's not doing so much. So then people can say, well, you know, are you thinking of new programs or stuff like that? So. And, and back to what Tom said, you know, we don't want you to not do a program because you don't have, you know, in the budget to pay the people, especially people are going to pay to be in the program. So we, we need, we want you to use the rec facilities as much as we can for our citizens. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. And, 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 you know, to put maybe a finer point on this is this modest increase for paddle, because that's the great example that we're all stuck on here for all we know, you are just working the living daylights out of some relatively, you know, minimum wage, you know, it, it could very well be if there's such a rush to use this and they're being used more and more and more, it, it makes sense in that context to perhaps ask for something more. I, mean, I don't want to prejudge what that is. And you may say, look, 38,000, we can run that exactly the way all of the folks in town expect it to be run. And I, you know, I'll be happy with that. But I wouldn't want you to say, well, you know, I got to keep under this cap and I have to do all this when there's so many other programs where participation was going down. If this is what everybody was rushing to, we, you know, we want to do a good job. The same point could be made with, you know, do I have one monitor or two monitors for me in the high school tennis courts? Well, in this context, it might make sense to have both for the entire year. 
Well, that's obviously it makes sense to have both the both, both facilities. The, the yeah. paddle courts we have we have palace kids and a couple of retired people are working, and and it's uh, they work one, one person on a shift and it's working out really well. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, our hey, clinics just, our just clinics are going up. The uh, Michael plays on a we have three teams in the men in the Fairfield County League playing. The women's had three teams and they added the fourth team this year playing the Fairfield County League. We've got the uh, adult clinics on uh, Tuesdays. Uh, Tuesdays and Fridays, and we have uh, youth clinics uh, Monday, Wednesday, and, uh, and Sunday, and some adult beginner clinics. And our clinics are all sold out, which is, which is yeah. great. So the big revenue source there. Dave, have you thought, I think there's huge opportunities for additional revenue paddle. I, I know the comparables are, right? If you want to join a paddle-only place outside of New Canaan, it's anywhere from $500 to $900 to join like the Wilton YMCA or the Western Field Club right. or whatever. Yep. And so we charge such a low price for playing paddle. And the, I think people would pay more if uh, under one circumstance, like one of the things we have a beautiful hut, right? But they can't use it unless there's a tenant there. And the tenant is there not all the time, right? So a lot of times they play paddle in the car. They be there. Um, so the question I have is, does it make sense to invest in security cameras where you pay for security cameras so that you can see who goes in and out of the hut Give a combination. This is what other clubs do. Give a combination for the members to use it, and then they use it whenever they want. They have a membership, and it costs let's say double. Let's say we charge them two hundred, seven hundred. You can pay for the security cameras. You can make the members much happier because they can use it any time of day. There doesn't have to be a, a tenant there, and and it's a win-win. And and you can make more money from the club because that's what other clubs do. They don't have a tenant. Great idea, Michael. Security cameras there yeah, and I mean, most of the private clubs which are different Mike we're, we're in a public park and you've got people all over the place coming in but we have an attendant on duty Monday to Friday from 9 a uh, 8 8 30 a.m till he's there till two o'clock and then he leaves and the, the other attendant goes back in at five o'clock so we, so, we didn't have an attendant on duty from two o'clock yeah, you, you don't have you don't have it all year round Steve though people play paddle now all year round you only have it in the fall yeah and so shut down maybe, maybe if you have an attendant dude, then you have a year-round permit dude. you know we we don't have a year-round permit. Our permit is basically for the season from October 1 to April 1. That's no, our season. I'm saying, what, should you do a year-round permit? Like, there's a huge opportunity because people play paddle now all well, year round. That, sure. Why not? We look at that. Yeah, that would be great. I just think there's a huge opportunity. People will be happier. Residents will be happier. It's a win-win and more revenue for the town as well. And also, right. you know, the residents did contribute to build to rebuild the paddle hut, right? Yeah. So we should we should get it open for people. So Michael, I think that's a really cool idea. And because it's always been a struggle of people, I know for a while, like people would finish up at 10, but the, and they made this before COVID and they wanted to go in, but there was nobody there. But that is like a perfect, you know, because you have everyone's information. Right, right we do. You got security cameras, you know who's going in. Yeah. Hey, hey, can, I, can I ask you a question? When we do the leagues and stuff like that, um, what one thing I heard, and I don't know whether it's true, is that just getting a paddle hut can be uh, a paddle time can be difficult, and people are kind of like, <clears throat> you know, really fast on it, and it shuts people out. So if you're playing paddle, is um, when you so I, I guess I just want to make sure that New Canaan residents have the opportunity to use it first, because like I, I swim at the Y a lot. And it's like impossible to get a spot. They do, they you do. have to have a member in order to make a reservation. It's always booked. So unless you have a membership, which you only can get from the town of New Canaan, okay. you cannot book a court time. And, and so, are you able to bring an outside guest? For 10, 10 bucks a person, which is actually, you know, that's 30 bucks if you want to play with three out-of-towners, which brings mm -hmm. a lot of revenue in for the town. But most people don't bring out-of-town. They might bring one. They're not bringing three, right? Okay. But 30 bucks is a good deal. Yeah, it's a good deal. You know, good deal. Yeah. yeah, when they do that, that's why our revenues are up so much because the ten dollars. Yeah. They raised like the it. guest fee two years ago, five to ten dollars. Yeah, that's I like that. It's a great move because one, it brings more revenue, and two, it discourages out of towners because every time I want to, like, let's say I want to bring out of town, like thirty bucks, uh, not worth it. Let me just ask three uh, in towners, right? I'm not paying thirty bucks every time to bring guests in, right? Okay. So I think it's a great move, Steve. But if you could think about that, making it year round. If some or another you could give access to the hut, because I know we, the, the towners, including myself, spent about 500000 to rebuild the hut, and not being able to use the hut for six months out of the year is, is a loss, I think, opportunity for revenue and enjoyment for, for you Canaanites. Or maybe we do something the summer, some the summer months where you have, we have the tenant on duty on the, the pop. I know that, that like, 
Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are the popular nights. So maybe we do is we we have an attendant staff that courts those three nights through the summer from from say six to ten o'clock, and, and people can come play and come inside. It would be you know they could do that. That'd be fine. It's better, but ideally, like I said, if you have a combination of security cameras, then they can use it all the time. That's a great idea. And, and Steve, right. you can also if you if you're bringing uh, if this is kind of a revenue positive thing. And I know we all want to make sure that you keep up the, uh, you know, the facility of people using it more. Just build into your expense repair and replacement number. I don't know, five thousand a year, whatever, and you'll pay for it. And then you won't yeah. be concerned if someone ruins it. I know one item that's not my budget, but Tiger's coming to see you. Uh, I think at the next meeting, we're, we're talking about redoing the uh, the hard court at Mead Park, which is we were going to. We were going to put a new surface on it, but they found that the base had, the roots had heed the basin spot. So uh, the, the contractor suggested we, we take the whole base up and replace the base. So Tiger's going to talk to you about using money we had for the uh, uh, clay courts this year to uh, to put a, a post tension concrete court in on the, the whole hard court of Meat Park. And we could convert the one tennis court there to four pickleball courts, which is a huge right. court. And we could we could sell a pickleball for it. My, my attendant at Meat Park could take reservations for the pickleball courts and the tennis courts. I think that's time. great. I think yeah. that's a, Perfect. is that in his budget? You're saying the cost of the doing the pickleball courts are in his budget, not yours. I didn't see that. I didn't, I'm not sure I saw that. I thought there uh, was something when we were on. Amy, he's he's coming to talk about transferring the, the use of the money from the clay courts to fix that one hard court. So we could, we could fix the practice, uh, the practice wall area. Whose budget is it right now, Steve? Who has the budget right now? It's in the budget now. But it was it was it was in the budget capital budget for clay court repairs and he, and he wants to take that take the full amount the hundred and twenty thousand and put it towards towards uh, um, uh, uh, redoing that whole that whole big hard court and make it make it four pickleball courts plus the, the practice wheel. So that makes sense. Steve. Yeah. So is he bringing that up or are you bringing that up on uh, in your presentation? Tiger is going to supposedly going to bring it to you when he comes before you uh, in the budget. I also thought a couple of years ago they were talking about uh, in uh, with with the Mead Park Court and the conversion to other purposes. At some point, I thought people were talking about maybe doing something for like um, street hockey or some, you know another flexible type of of purpose. Yeah, and I don't yeah, know whether talking about convert, taking two of the clay courts and make them all an all weather yeah. surface. But I think I think you know what Tiger's proposing to do with the bed hard court. We'll, we'll, we'll get four pickleball. Pickleball is going crazy. It'll be, it be a big boom for the town. Uh, Good. But our tennis is picking up. Our, our, our play picked up last summer. The attendance was up. And like I said, our, our clinics, I got two great instructors. And the, the demand for our clinics is going through the roof, which is great. So, yeah, well, that's uh, great. And I cannot reiterate. I, we need. We can't just listen to you I'll say you anyone numbers. else. I'll we need the numbers. Okay, I'll get you numbers tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, given that your revenue is going up and given the COVID and people want to be outdoors and do rec, I think you got a great story to invest, like I said, in improving maintenance and the courts and light. Yep. And like I said, if you do the security cameras, I'll be the first one to say, this is a great move, Steve. And you give access to yep. the hot. I think those are all things that I think all of us would support as a, as a great move. And as Amy says, and you can justify it because your revenues are, are, are going through the roof. Yes. Yeah. yeah, which is not to say that we think that, you know, everything the town provides in recreation should pay for itself. It's kind of like, it's a nice, it's nice part of what we do, but when it's appropriate, I, I think we should do that. So. I, yep. I have a, so. so how about, how about the pool? Like what's going on with the pool? I mean, so you have, you're, you're going to profile all the programs you do. You're going to show us yep. what you did differently in COVID. And what if anything you're thinking of going forward, like the pickleball courts? How about how about the pool? Where where are we on the pool? And does anyone remember when the debt fully amortizes on that? Yeah, last last year the pool we couldn't open the pool. We didn't get the pool open until June 17th because of the the, the, the COVID restrictions, mm -hmm. and uh, they also limited the number of people who could be in the pool at any one time. So we did not sell any non-resident passes last mm -hmm. last summer. But what we decided to do because we we missed the first three weeks of the season, we instead of charging four hundred fifty-five dollars for a pass for residents, we charged three hundred fifty for residents mm -hmm. for a pass. 
So we we had a we had a strong showing of the pool. Pool did, did fairly. I mean, our revenue was down a little bit because we didn't have the non-residents, which bring in a hundred people, a hundred families at twelve hundred fifty dollars. We lost that hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. But but we did well. We did it right. The pool is pool solid. We have a we have a good operating balance. Um, this is the last year. This year twenty-two will pay off the bond. Great. So that, that I'm sorry. Is it this year or next year? Is it twenty-one into twenty-two? It'll be April, April, April 22, the bond gets paid off. Thank you. And so, uh, and then after that, the pool will be a self-funded subsidiary. And, you know, we, we're going to, there's going to be some repairs that need to be done. I know the parking lots are 20 years old. So we'll have to take some money out of the pool fund to pay those. But the mm -hmm. idea of the pool was put up as an enterprise fund. So it would support itself. That's great. And is there, is there a story, Steve, about, um, Operational savings from solar and whatnot that you maybe you can. I that. don't know what that is yet. I, I haven't seen that. I, I gotta ask. ask I, um, I didn't see my bills, but I don't know what they credit to us for, for solar. They haven't told me that. I have to find out the bill is. Okay. But, but going back to revenue, Amy, just for just for example, in, in fiscal year 20, fiscal year 20, I, I'll send you guys this sheet. Mm -hmm. um, we spent a million forty thousand two hundred fifty dollars on. Uh, expenses for recreation administration program, we bought in revenue of six hundred twenty-one thousand. So we returned sixty cents on the dollar. Which, yeah. You know, yeah, no, um, that's that's a great thing to put forward. Great yeah. story. Yeah. Paddle tennis, we spent thirty-five thousand eight hundred dollars. We bought in forty-six thousand two hundred ten dollars. We have returned a dollar twenty-nine cents on the dollar. So, it's like, yeah. so I'll send you that sheet. <laughs> you, know, you know, I mean, you know, what, one of the Latin things. Center, yeah, we, the lap we spent three hundred two thousand. We bought one hundred twelve thousand, one hundred thirteen thousand. We returned thirty seven cents in a dollar. So I'll send I'll send you this information. Yeah, you have it. great. That's great. And, and one of the things that I think, uh, you know, I, full disclosure, Sally's my sister, but what she always really liked about paddle is she always said, "This is one of the 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 programs that the people who are working and paying taxes use." And so she was always like, let's make sure, you know, for it's like that, that adults, I mean, everyone uses it now, but it's, it's so many of these things that, you know, people pay for, this is one of those few things that really, you know, the, the Joe taxpayer uses a lot. And I, I think that's great that we promote that a lot. Yeah, I agree. As you know, Amy, probably, or Steve knows for sure, I'm a paddle player. And when I was working, you can use it at night. And the best thing is to be able to hang out in the hut and enjoy yeah. some time with friends after you play Paddle. So I think it's a great thing that we've done for the town. And yeah, I no. think we can take it to the next level. So good stuff. Steve. Hey, okay, so you'll, you'll come back and look to put some proposal that opens up the hut, you know, much more, maybe with security cameras. You'll look, you'll look at that, Steve. Yeah, I'll look at that. I'll yeah. talk to Chris Kyers and get a, number, get a price for that. Okay. That'd be great. So it could be open year round is what you're going with Michael, yeah. which I think yeah, is it's it's open six months right now. It's open to uh, October to, to March or April and, there's a huge opportunity that we're missing for, for the other six months, you know? And I don't, like I said, I don't think you need a tenant there all the time is if you have a combination and security mm -hmm. camera. So you, you don't even need all that expense to have it open all the time. Well, even we had, even left the porch open, Michael, didn't leave the actual lodge itself, but we left the porch open. And then maybe three nights a week, we have the lodge open for people playing at night, but to keep the, keep the porch area open with the cameras in there. And then the lodge, the lodge itself, we, we could open two or three nights a week. When, when the yeah, yeah, that, when that's better than what we have now because right now the porch and the and the hut is not open so people can't hang out when it's it, you know other than outside well, maybe we put the security camera in, in the porch area and then the, the lodge we get up maybe three nights a week in june july and august when yeah the i think we'll open. start there and see how that goes right that's that's a great start, a start. okay yeah. but, it, but it's that. nice to have access to the restrooms and everything so yeah. i i you know look at it, you can do it for for you could do it every night yeah. I, I wouldn't I would try we to. Have an out, we have an outside door for restroom. That's on the, the outside door for restroom is on a time lock from uh, April April first to 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 uh, the end of September when the when the court the paddle courts up. So there's one bathroom available all the time. For yeah, seven. I'm just saying if you have a security camera inside, like everyone's used to security camera. If you have a security camera inside, right, then why not have it open all the time, right? So that if there's any issues that you know right away, like like the problem is somebody's got to monitor the camera, Michael. No, no, you don't monitor, like, other forward. places don't monitor the yeah, camera. But, but if something happens when somebody breaks in or somebody somebody takes something or, or does something in there, and we're not going to know until after it happens, we got to go back yeah. and look at the video. Right. And see who that's it was. why you have the camera. 
That's why you, have, you don't need to know when it happens. You need. Yeah, I mean, an attendant, it. even if you hired an attendant to be there live, the intention yeah. is not that he or she actually prevent it from happening. Well, it will. No, it does. It will. You're in a, well, I mean, I'm sure it would have more of an effect than a camera, but the idea is we don't train these people to stop outright evil. I know, I understand. It's, it's a but, deterrent, and so would the camera. That's the thinking, I see. If people haven't known this camera, they're, they're, they're not going to do our that. Park, people don't understand is our park is getting a tremendous amount of use from outside people from New Canaan. I bet, I bet on any given day, 40% 40 plus people are non-residents in our park. I mean, I mean, they don't have the combination. What I'm saying is you got to give the combination only to members. It's only the members right. that do combination. Look at that. Okay, right. well, that, that's another we, we, we can put We can put the combo lock on the door. We can do that too. Right. That's what we want to do. That, that would be perfect. Right. And that might be a better you brought idea. This up, that while you brought this up, how the park is used by so many people uh, in the greater Fairfield County, which is great, right? I'm just throwing this out there, and it may not be here, but we don't get to use Darian's beaches. We don't get to right. use other people's stuff. So I don't know where this would come and it's maybe not here, but perhaps in New Canaan, we do something like every household gets two or three car passes, the Waveney Park pass. And then I don't know, maybe at some point we charge for parking or something, or we get some sort of, because the, it's expensive to maintain. And we have the Waveney Conservancy doing incredible things. We have the, the paths we're doing and all that stuff. And I just think, you know, we, we do a lot of stuff in New Canaan that benefits people in a broader way and our taxpayers pay for it all. And I'm not trying to be exclusive. And, and, and to the extent we did something like this, I think it could go towards a conservancy or towards your budget or something. Yeah. So that's not a bad idea too, right? You're saying just like about, July 4th. About seven, years ago, uh, about seven years ago, I went out to, out to California, my brother-in-law, when he was going to buy his ovens for his pizza trucks. And we were out in Watsonville and we drove over to Pebble Beach and drove in but there was a toll booth they gave you a ticket and you went in and if you stopped at a restaurant or a shop and you showed your receipt, they didn't charge you. If you didn't have a receipt, it was a $20 fee to drive through. <laughs> so yeah. yes. you, could, you, you could put a toll booth at each end of the park and uh, have the tenant there. <laughs> well, or, or it can be just, just you go up and down. Yeah. yeah, residents have a pass. You're not a resident, you pay 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah, why not? I, I, yeah, I just think we don't, we, you know, again, we're not trained to make money on our parks, right? But we're trying to keep them in good shape and the more usage and, and Steve if you have anything except anecdotal if you have anything that can demonstrate uh how our usage went up because I think for a while our parks were the only ones open around like you couldn't go in Ambas's parks so right that would be really helpful and it I means probably how, not something we do right away but we should think that way you know well, and I think this idea, Amy, would get a lot more traction if, to your point, if we actually had evidence or other support that would say that 40% number that you quoted is credible, I think you would get a lot of people to stop and start thinking right along those lines. I really yeah. do. Yeah, and again- Drive through, wait, drive through waiting after three o'clock in the afternoon or come through, come through this weekend, drive through. It's going to snow again tomorrow and again Thursday, but drive through- Wavy Saturday afternoon about two o'clock, and the place would be jammed, and it's all people sledding. I guess most of those people, a big chunk of those don't live in New Canaan. Ron has seen it. It's yeah. it's mob. There'll be parking lots full of the park. <laughs> and that's good, but let's we're just I'm not asking like a ton of money, but like five bucks or something so that we that can cut the grass, you know? Right. So Definitely. so great. But other than that, our operating budget is pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's right in line. I mean, you know, the- um, so Talk to us about Lapham. Why, why is Lapham down? Or did you just have some programs that couldn't- Yeah, no, you know, you know what happened is then, then in the budget season last year, when it came to the, right before with the Board of Finance, Lynn, uh, uh, Lynn Bond announced that she was going to retire on July 1. And so somehow when they, when they reconfigured the salary level, they put in seventy-four thousand dollars for Lynn's salary, and that was that was instead of taking her her salary down to the the first step in her grade and leaving that putting that number in the budget, they put a number like seventy-four, seventy-eight thousand dollars in the budget, which was twenty thousand dollars less than she actually was making. And the new director is going to get probably the bottom of her of her grade level or her steps. 
that that's that was the full pop. But Good. The, Understood. That's why it really is. It's, it's only down because because the, the, the director retired. Well, we haven't hired a new assistant director yet, but the new assistant director will come in at, at, at the beginning of that, of that step. So that's why it's a different, a different number. There. And we're budgeting for the new assistant director that's in the the, uh, the budget for the next budget. year? Yeah. Great. Lynn, Lynn is working right now on a part-time basis. She's going to work into, into July. Uh, she works 15 hours a week. And we have another part-time person who works 10 hours a week. So we're covering, we're covering the, 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 uh, the, the position that way. But, but, but we want to, we want, once we get through COVID and get towards June, we're going to advertise for that position and hire somebody. Yeah, and, and not to reiterate, but again, it'd be great to know how many people Latham served, sure. how many programs were done, how many people did it. I think they did some really creative stuff with COVID. So I, I, I think that would, job. you should highlight that. But she's got a lot of COVID, a lot of, a lot of Zoom programs and some of her instructors are working with like yoga and exercise and people. And, and, and so it's working very well. Yeah, but we should, you should let people know. You know, okay. like if you're not involved with Latham, you, you might not know. And I'd be very yeah. curious from your stuff, uh, if there's any programs that you guys put in place that were trying to be creative and responsive to COVID. So I... Um, because you know, a lot of people got got pretty nimble. So I'd be curious what Rec did. Yeah, we we we've been restricted by the numbers because they put twenty five on any any indoor facility, and we don't really have another other waiting house. We have another place to go for programs. So okay. Lapham has been turned into the uh, the the COVID testing clinic, and and also they're, they're becoming the uh, the vaccination center. So yeah, but they also did a whole job a bunch of Zoom stuff, which you know you don't need. Your location to do it, but they 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 did programs, so um, which is cool. Which is cool. What's going on with Kiwanis? What's going Kiwanis, on? Kiwanis. Well, we 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 met with Kevin and I. Kevin met with the Y. Ron was involved, in it, and uh, Kevin had, had proposed to the Y that they they run Kiwanis Monday through Friday and, and let the public come. But they they're 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 going through the same problem with, that we are with with, with revenue input and. Membership down because of uh, COVID, so they could not do it this time. So we 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 are going to hopefully if everything goes back to some sorts of, of partial normal normalcy, we get some increased number of kids in our camps. The Y camp will will use the the old apartment and the, the area they used in the previous years. The public area will be, will be opened back up to the public Monday through Friday. We're looking at um, <clears throat> I revised my staffing to accommodate for that. Um, and we're looking to try and put maybe a slip and slide type of a, of a, a feature in Kiwanis and uh, do some other program. Like maybe we have a storytelling thing we did at the pool. Maybe bring that bring that with the library down to Kiwanis because we got a nice area of small playground with toddlers there and, and it'd be great for little kids. Mom taught like story time. We're looking at uh, maybe exploring the idea, maybe bring in four or five food trucks on a Thursday night and have a food truck night. We're looking at uh, uh, some different creative things to bring people into the park because they, they realize it's a great little park and come utilize it. So um, we, we're, we're working on those things for the summer. So hopefully we're waiting for the state. They're supposed to issue the guidelines uh, at the end of the month. So we'll have a better idea what, what's going to happen with summer and what we can do. All right. So. so is the Y going to rent Kiwanis out again, but go back to the formula we had previous years where they didn't get Not the yet. entire park? They're, and they're agreed what, to pay, pay the fee they paid this year, but they'll have they'll be they'll go back to the area they used in previous summers. So wait a minute, are we because we had talked about that they've been underpaying forever? Yeah. So no, they, they've increased the fee. How to what amount? Uh Kevin's working on that. <laughs> That's important. They they cannot have yeah. the use of that entire thing. I know they're their revenues are down, but last year. Um, that, we but need to know I think, that. I, think, I can't remember. I went to twelve thousand. Went to twelve thousand dollars last summer, I think. No, gonna, last year was they, five thousand. Didn't they get it all? Uh, no, five? no it went to ten the, last year. You did okay. Okay, Kevin. Kevin's negotiating the fee with them right now. So. And that hasn't been finalized, so I don't know. Maybe Kevin would comment um, further about that since they haven't signed anything. But Stephen's right; they're negotiating going back to pre-COVID, just using the part of the park they've always used. There was no talk of the fee going down. Um, there was only talk of 
you know, they can't use the entire park as they did last summer. But, but we, we were, Tom, you were in this meeting last year. Yes. But when we talked, I mean, I think, and I think Ronnie, you did this, the per kid amount of money they made, I think it was like a quarter of a million dollars. It was enormous. It, it was, was enormous. And, and there's no way that their staffing cost all that much. So, and we were getting $5,000. So yeah. it has to be something that's, and, you know, and again, I, I hate to sound this way, but again, a, a, a big chunk of kids who use the park, and I, it's great that they use it, are not New Canaan residents, a broader swath. So again, just the idea of having, the, just like the user fees for the kids using the fields for, for practices, that people who are using something that takes maintenance help offset it. So, you know, does Kevin have the ultimate decision on how much we charge them? I mean, where's it, where's the authority there? I don't get, I don't get how that falls through. I think that lies in Kevin's hands, the final authority and executing that agreement and the rent. Really? Really? Well, Just there, there'll be something we can discuss with Kevin on Thursday. Yeah. Um, but I look, I, I completely agree with you that we, we, <laughs> The prior arrangement, whether it's just using what they did before we uncovered all of this years or decades of underpayment, if they're only going to use that part, maybe that's the best we can do because they don't have a use for it, right? So it's like pushing on a string. That's all they want. But we, we can't simply agree to, you know, these kinds of arrangements where we're subsidizing their programs at the cost of, you know, what the town can use. And, and, and Steve, correct me if I'm wrong. Don't we have to maintain the sand? Like we had, we had to do a whole bunch of stuff, you know, that was way beyond five grand. We got to bring, we got to. That was that last year too. We weren't able to drain the pond because of COVID. Because the public works department does it, but they put the guys on in cohorts. They work different shifts, so we didn't get that done last summer. But we normally we, we go in, in in the the first week in May and they they pump the pond down to a small puddle. And we we clean the whole the whole, the beach and everything else. We put new sand on the, on on the into the pond area, and then we, we would fill the pond. And we had a problem last summer with pond weed. It was growing like crazy. It was ugly. It was just this floating mass on top of the surface. It's, it was it was just it's it's, it's 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 I think it's part of global warming. But the, we had the same problem our lake in New Jersey. But the, uh, we we never had it quads. We had it last year there for the first time. So hopefully we'll we do maintain we maintain the sand. We chlorinate the pond. We pump water over well into the pond. Um, you know, but at at, at a at a ten thousand dollar rental, are we covering the maintenance cost for the portion of Kiwanis that they're going to be using? No. I mean, yeah, the, I mean, the idea yeah. isn't to be a profit making enterprise. But on the other hand, we're not supposed to be. I don't maintain the beach. I don't maintain the beach part. Of the I mean, in other words, if I take my little track, little machine out, and I groom the beach, I groom all the, the areas we use for the public. Maybe once a week, I'll touch up their beach area. But, but should, yeah, they bring in their dumpster. Their crew cleans up and removes trash. They uh, maintain their cabin that's in the back <laughs> near their sitting camping area. They invested in the Gaga pit, the active in the back there. They clear the area for archery. They, I've seen them with mowing and weed whacking okay. for their area of what they do. So they are extremely helpful in maintaining what they have back there. Okay. Occasionally, there'll be something where Steve has a minor situation where they're they'll use a part of the park they're not supposed to and he quickly gets them back in their arena but it's been a good partnership i do agree that the price in the past was basically giving it away and um don't quote me but i want to say it went to 15 forgive me and it is still being negotiated i thought it went from five to 15 not five to ten but i can't seem to find it while you guys were chatting but it was a it doubled at least doubled in rent and i would um be leery to kind of double it again this year with a covid year where the why i'm sure is down 50 percent with memberships and usage and and you know lost as other businesses did but that's only my own personal opinion um but i think that ultimate decision of what goes in the lease, um, you know, may final, final, have final answer be Kevin. So you may need to verify that in the meeting. So last year, wasn't it Kiwanis that they, we, they, they put this big splashing of the uh, numbers for, and then we, we battled it back. So, so if I look at Kiwanis, uh, just expenditures. So for, 
20 was 55 and 20, 21 was 65. So we're basically going down just a little bit in Kiwanis on this. And that's just. Um, I, don't, I don't remember why, why, why we're used to that. It, what, what, it, was, it was something minor. Yeah, it's, it's not a lot of money. Okay. And, and um, Rona, if you guys have like a, I think you mentioned that there's like this uh, game plan for what to do with Kiwanis, yeah. I would share with people, let them, let them know um, how people are finding this little gem and that, you know, last year, the why got it because of COVID and I get that, but right. how you're going to, again, offer more services to people. You bet. I made some notes while Steve was taking notes of things he'll send you, but we'll kind of formalize it like Steve did last year in a PowerPoint so mm -hmm. that it's telling a story um, for the usage. And we have some incredible photos we've got gathered over the year for Kiwanis, of how it's being used. Good, good. Um, you want to go over capital quickly? Or? Yeah, capital sounds good. Wait, can I have one other operating question first? So yeah. Steve, one of the big things that got put in place last year was the public-private partnership and, um, and that we were having all the different people using the fields for different uh, sports teams and that right. they're, they're, we're collecting a uh, usage fee. So right. did that get collected and remitted across all of the different uh, parties to the New Canada Athletic Fund? So I know there was a, so did every did every team pay it and did we remit I, it? I, I don't know. They, 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 uh, they, their treasurer contacted me and I gave them the contact names of youth soccer, youth lacrosse, youth baseball, youth softball football um, and, in flag football. but didn't some of the programs run through you so you guys collected the money and then sent it over no like I, 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 I did I did we didn't we didn't put a line item in my budget to pay that so there was no but money that's not a line item in the budget that is something you charge someone to be part of the part of the, the you, know, you, you pay to be flag football you pay a hundred and then whatever so there's no there's no line item in your budget that's just a user fee. And I want to make sure yeah. that the memorandum of understanding is getting funded properly. It's getting funded. And you have to understand one thing as well. Last summer, they they collected, I think they sent you guys a letter. We, they collected $60,000 in fees from field rentals and things. But every night, the lights are on. And every night, the town of McCain had paid the light bill. It wasn't the athletic foundation. So there was $7,000 of lights that came out of my budget. So they're, they're, they're after my case. But well, we, you, need to, you need to pay us... Uh, your field use fees for your for your little kids soccer and and your flag football. And I said, wait a minute, I contributed seven thousand dollars towards the lights out of my budget. <laughs> but yeah, but that, 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 that's the deal. I you know that's another issue whether you right. have to set something up. But the, the deal is yeah, that everybody's not paying. It. But Amy, Amy, the school's not paying a nickel. And I'll give you an example: the, the, the all sports booster club runs a a summer camp from nine to one, and they compete at my camps, and they bring in a hundred kids. They use two tennis courts. They use a turf field. They use part of Dunny Stadium. And the Booster Club doesn't pay a nickel. I realize the money they make up the camps, they give back to the school to pay for coaches and other things. But they don't pay a nickel for field use fee. So I mean, is that meaning everybody did not pay the use fee? That's what I want to know. We had a deal that everybody... The private who, organizations did. Okay, did, the private your, organizations did, did flag did. football, did every that's single... My, that's my program. Did it's they... Did, did your I did program... Not pay any money. But yeah. you were supposed to, because we signed up on the agreement. I didn't collect any money because I didn't. I didn't have a line item to pay them. I can't. I can't collect the money and pay them without a line item. Well, no, you just charge them more when they sign up for it instead well, of. I pay them. I, I got to cut a check to the athletic foundation out of the town budget. I don't have a line item in the budget to pay. It. How do I pay it? Because when you people sign up for it and start charging a hundred, well, you I'm charge totally one twenty-five. It, I'm what? totally opposed to. It. My kids it it program. doesn't matter if you're opposed to it, Steve. That was the memorandum of understanding that the town signed. It does. It's you can't optionally say I'm opposed. Then you got to put twenty five thousand dollars in my budget. Part of my budget. What? I have to have a line item to pay them. Without a line item, I can't spend money. I can't pay any money. You, it'll be an offset. You'll see it on the revenue side, but you have to have a line side item to pay it. Well, why didn't you put it in your budget? Because it, it got it that got signed after the budget was already sent to the select. Is it in this year, this year's budget, what you'll be presenting? I was with Kevin about it. He was going to discuss it with, 
the athletic foundation further. Okay. I don't think it's fair that I don't think it's fair that board education gets you take the turf fields, which is the biggest thing. It's about the board education gets eighty percent of the time in the turf fields, and they don't pay a freaking nickel. I get sixty hours a year for rec department programs in the turf fields. That's it. Right, but I guess the question is though, is for whatever the programs are, whether it's flag football or senior volleyball, right? The point is, is are you collecting use fees? And if so. Collecting. So you're not collecting any use. Fees. I, don't have any, I don't have any way to pay it. I can't, unless it's a line sure item. Sure you do. Because you, when you sign up for a program. Correct. Okay, if you sign up for a program, if before the use fee was in place, it was a hundred bucks a person. I'm just making that right. number. And going forward under the member of understanding, every participant was supposed to pay 25 bucks. So then you charge $25 more. So none of it yeah. comes out of your pocket. Not one penny. No, no, it doesn't work that way, Amy. If it goes into revenue, it goes into the revenue account. I can't spend money out of revenue. I have to have a line item that I can I can put a request to. Okay, I had three hundred kids play flag football and thirty no, girls play. Steve, I understand what you're saying. And Amy, it makes sense. He needs to have a line item to pay it because revenue doesn't offset expense. But so what, he, Steve? Why? I think you should ask for a budget this year for an expense, and you will right. have a revenue offset. So can we ask for yeah. a budget for that I'll, I'll i'll figure it out and see what it is okay what it is. All right, but the board of education should put money to the damn fund there because they're the ones used to feel more than anybody else maybe we should charge them too yeah well, we should talk no, yeah that, that's our schools that's what our schools do well, the schools. They, they, they use i get 60 yeah. hours and they get they get they get they get 800 hours <laughs> Amy, if the school is using it, we should reflect the cost of the, of the fields for the schools, too. I have no problem with that. Why not? It's part of their expense. You know, we, they, we can give them the budget, too, and say, fine, we'll pay for it. But you got to legitimately say, what is the cost of running the school? And if they use 80% of it, they should be budgeting 80% of the cost. And they could say, we don't have it in our current budget, but we need additional budget to pay for the fields. But it truly reflects the cost of the schools. I have no problem with that. Um, I just need to go back to the MOU. The MOU doesn't right. state that the schools pay. So I would just, you know, it's a two-sided. Go back to the MOU, right. You got to go back to the MOU. And, and fine. But I guess my point is, is and, and I, I appreciate the fact that if there isn't a line item for liabilities, maybe nobody can be cutting a check. But the point is, is that these programs, I think all of the participants understand that there's use fees to be mm -hmm. paid. Great. And if they pay them, then those monies should go either as a pass-through or we'll give you the budgetary authority to cut a check. But either way, those monies should find a way to go into the town so that it can then find its way to the athletic foundation. Because that is how we're paying for new turf in 10 years. That's how we're paying for replacement lights and all the rest of it, it seems to me, right? Well, the other thing is, is in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the parks budget this year is a three hundred thousand dollar capital item to go to athletic foundation. Yes, for improvements. So I mean, yeah. so we saw that. That's coming out of the yeah, town. So why? That's just a, a yeah. This is a holding spot right there. But the, but that's a different point. The the the, re, the point here is a memorandum of understanding was signed. And right. the idea that we did it is exactly what Tom said, so that we can collect money, a little bit from people over time. And that was the agreement that was signed. And, and I don't think you can just say, I don't like well, it, so I'm not charging it. It has, big, That's it has not a big impact on some of my programs, not all my programs, but like take my kids' soccer program. My kids' soccer program, I give, they, 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 they gutted it and it went to the, the, the UK and Soccer Association. So, read, so my program went from 800, 900 kids a season down to be 120, 130 kids a season. We don't have coaches. We don't pay coaches. We have parent coaches that volunteer. We don't have referees anymore. All we do is give the kids a colored T-shirt. They play for an hour on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon. The parents do the refereeing. The parents coach it, and and I charge them thirty dollars to play in the league. So now I got to charge them fifty-five dollars. <laughs> you know what do they get out of it? <laughs> that would you they, know they play, they, play the grass. Right. And anyways, I just think if there's a memory and understanding and we were supposed to collect this money and it was supposed to collect through programs you run, well, me. you got to comply with it. You just can't decide. I don't want it. I don't think it's right. You could have, you should have said that ahead of time. 
you know. But I'll sue, uh, then I'll sue the town. I'll sue the athletic town because they got a lot of stuff in that. I, they shouldn't get. I, I'm just saying that was the deal. That right. was from board of finance. Yeah, That's how we understood yeah, it. Yeah. And you, you know, people don't get to pick and choose. All right. Can we, can we move on? Yeah. I think Steve understands. We all understand. So let's let's, let's go to capital. Go in a circle now. All right. Um, basically, our capital this year we're looking at is Wavy Trail work. Is we put thirty thousand in, and the, at the uh, Wavy Park uh, Conservancy has been matching it up, and we've been fixing the trails. We want to fix the trails along the parkway, and some of the spurs come off, come off that to back to the main part of the park. Uh, so that, that's what we're looking for this year. Uh, we have money in the current budget to resurface the high school tennis courts. We have forty five thousand. Uh, we found that the, that the paint surface is coming up. And the contractor looked at it. He recommended that rather than try and just fix the areas that are bad and, and paint over it, uh, he said we should come in and take the paint off the whole whole thing. And then, and so that's twenty-eight thousand dollars. We could strip all, the, strip everything down to the, to, to the concrete, put a new primer coat on, and then come and paint it with the two coats of paint. We'll get our five to seven years out of the out of the surface. So, um, did did that not wear the way we thought it would? I mean, it's not very old. That's five years old. It, it's it's. Um, did they put it, it, it down it, right? Because I remember looking at going. I don't know if it did go down right or not, it, but we got to fix it. it. It's peeling up all over the place. So to do it, to, to do to do it, um, we we got We got we got to spend the extra money to strip it down. To, we got to take it down to the bare concrete and and then put put the right treat it, put the right primer on it, and, and then paint it. We should be in good shape. But we can't just. I don't want to go in and just spot it and then um, have it peel up in a different area. And then people say, oh, you just painted the course last year. How can it peel it up? So we got to do it right. How, how uh, do we, so it's not going to be the same group who put it down the first time, right? I mean, we'll, how do we we'll, know? We'll, 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 we'll brought the bid on it. Get it done. Um, athletic field fencing is $10,000. That's the yeah. fences around the turf fields in, in, the, yeah. in, the, in Wakeley Park. Uh, we, 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 we have to replace certain sections of the, of the of the chain link fencing every year because it gets damaged with the cross balls and soccer balls and everything else. Uh, um, we have we have a couple sets of bleachers at Waveney Park that are the old style that are probably 25 years old and they no longer meet the code. So we've got to replace those with some bleachers. But you have to, the code now says you got more than, than three levels of seating that you have to have a fence around the top part in case so somebody's a fall off. So we need to replace, there's two sets we've got to replace. The softball fields? Is this the one yeah. by the, okay. Now I know the one you talk about. Then um, <clears throat> lap center furniture, furniture replacement, that's something that they, they've asked for to replace some of the drapes and things inside the house, the building overlap. So some of the, some of the we, we replaced some of the furniture in the dining room. We want to replace some of the other furniture. Um, Meat Park tennis walkways, $12,500. We have a walkway that goes from the park lot down to the lower courts. And we have one that goes up along courts one and two, back to courts three, the, at least the three and four. Uh, we did the we did the, the courts coming from the lodge up to the up to the uh, courts five and six and seven eight last year with asphalt. Really approved it. We, we, they were the same material. There were millings that were taken from the paving projects and put down. And the millings is it's just walking on pebbles and everything else. So to make it look nice and, and make it make it easier for people to traverse on, so they're not tripping on stuff. We want to go in. And, Replace that with, with the asphalt asphalt walkway. So that that's the two walkways there, and then the colony improvements is some additional furniture for the the, pla the plaza that we put in with, at at the uh, at by the colonnade area, and also the town put that plaza in over off of Richmond Hill Road. Tiger thought it'd be nice to have a nice table of chairs there, so that money is to go for the, the for additional tables and chairs for those two areas. And that's, hey, that's our you, capital. Did you put in a new um, tennis? Was it last year's special new tennis hut? The one that you yeah, had with Gillette? We're, 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 we're going to do that this year. We we we, we got caught up with COVID. We had us put right. another year. So right. We're going to do it this summer. Okay, great. Okay. And, and so there there seems to be a relatively large number next year in the five year plan for lighting at Mead. Is that right? Tennis lighting. Yeah, the the, the, the lighting on the court lighting at court seven and eight was done about twenty years ago. And it, I don't know, it, it was the, the lights they put in it, it, it used to be more lights. They, they put four poles in with two lights in each pole and it, it cut, the, it cut the, the lighting almost in half. So there's some point, if we put them on, there was a, you can't see the ball half the time, you lose it in the lights. So 
the idea would be to go in and, and put some new kind of LED lighting and wood light that towards it, make, make it more playable. It, yeah, people the only reason why I asked Steve is really if, whether or not any of this mead stuff would need to be rethought or re revisited if, in fact, yeah. we're going to go forward with the conversion to pickleball court. Well, no, we're going to do pickleball on the hard court from above. Oh, okay. So I think the pickleball court should be lit. That'd be great. So. Well, for sure. I mean, it certainly would increase the day and would allow more link. people to use it. Yeah. I okay. thought that, that they were looking for spots for a rink, and I thought that hard court would be a great place to put the rink in the wintertime. And then you can take the lights for the rink and use the lights for pickleball courts in the summer. So, I don't know. Let's have a look at. Okay. All right, I'll get you all this other information. I'll chat with Ron and we'll, we'll get it off to you tomorrow morning. So, you have tomorrow, you have by Wednesday. So, you're ready for the meeting Thursday. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's, it's such a great opportunity for you to profile what the rec yep. department provides right i mean it's really providing some great service to this community in the middle of an unprecedented lockdown and yeah. it's a great story to tell it really yep. is absolutely and, and if you i think in putting it in context i think it's important to say of our entire budget we spend this much money for our parks that serve right. this many people and guess what we we pull in about 60 percent of the expense so i think you know, so that, then if there are things you want to do, it's a, it's a very valid point to say, you know, if, if you give us a buck, we're giving you 60 cents back. You're really going to, you know, and everybody uses the parks. It's and, great. And yeah, the right. town will support it because the town uses the parks. They can feel like this money is worth it. Out of their taxpayers' money, this is something absolutely worth it. So I don't yeah. think you have any issues. With I improving. agree. We, we took a lot of, but if you took recreation, Waveney House, Paddle Tennis, Civic Activities, Lapin Center, Kiwanis Park, we 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 spent in fiscal year twenty we spent one point seven six million one point seven six million dollars, and uh, we we bought back almost nine hundred thousand revenues. We bought back almost fifty two cents of the dollar. So, so that's great. That's great. Good story. And and so you know and you know it's also a time for you to say I'd like to do X Y and Z and this is why it works like it's Michael's. It you know, yeah. yeah. So, a good time to ask for it, Steve. Right now. Sorry. Good. It's a good time to ask for additional budget. All right. right? All right good. Yeah. What you're doing, so. yeah. No ask, no get, you know. Right. Oh, thank you. Appreciate your guys' support. You're great. Okay. Well, thanks, Steve, for the update. We appreciate thanks. it. All right. Good. See you on Thursday. Yeah. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.